In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make the target practice game using the starter map. Once we have the starter map loaded up, the first thing we're going to want to do is to get the voxels out of the library that we're going to need. If we use the search bar and search for wood, we can pull out wood parquet, wood shingle tile, and then if we search for stone, we can pull out stone medieval brick. The next thing we're going to want to do is to select wood par key in the hotbar, then select the pen tool and the paint operation and to paint the existing area of the map with this voxel material. Then using the extrude tool we can pull out the edges of the map and bring that out to make a nice large flat area for us to build our level on. Then, once we have the base sorted out, let's select Stone Medieval Brick from our hotbar, then we can select the shape and cube and drag out a large wall at the edge of the base. Once you're happy, press enter to apply. Now, instead of clearing the brush, let's use the move operation to pull the brush to the opposite side to create a wall there. Now with resize selected again, we can do the exact same for the other two walls. Now that we've got the walls built, let's move our start and end points over towards the same end of the building. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is to build a dividing wall between the two. So just like before, let's select the shape and cube tool and drag out a cube that's going to fill the centre of the level. In order for plays to progress around the level, we're going to want to cut a door in at the end. So staying with the shape and cube tool, let's select the remover and this time remove. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is divide the two halves of the level into separate rooms. So again, using the shape and cube tool, let's add in a wall. Using the remover, let's chop out a doorway. Now instead of having to repeat this several times on various walls, let's use the volume select tool and select a brush that surrounds the wall itself. Now, using the duplicate command, we're able to drag this wall and make stamps of it throughout the level. So let's go ahead and do that. Don't forget to click the apply button each time you want to create a copy of the wall. So at the end of our level, we're going to want it to be sat upon a raised area. So using the shape and cube tool, let's add a large block to the end of the level. This is going to prevent players from traveling the wrong direction. Using the remover, let's cut out a door that will send us back to the start.
Now let's go ahead and move our end point up onto the top of this block. Let's rotate it and move it into position so we can't miss it as we move through the doorway. So now it's time to define the staircase up to this platform. To do this, we'll use the line tool. If we change our brush down to a one by one by one, and then update that again to be a one by 20 by one, we'll find that the brush goes into a nice long shape, which is ideal for creating stairs. So if we click at the top, and then click at the bottom once we're happy with the position, our stairs will appear. Let's define a couple of squares either side of the stairs just to hide the underneath. And there we go, a nice quick stairwell. Don't forget to position the start also in the way of the doorway so players can't miss it. At this point, it'll be worth having a quick fly through the level just to double check that the spacing of everything works okay. So now that the level is built out, it's time to move on to updating the targets. If you open the world tree and adjust the drop down at the top to the target, our view will change to show us just specifically the target template. Now we can update the mesh here to be more appropriate for our scene. So if we search archery target, we can see that the target itself will update to the new mesh. We can then adjust the drop down at the top of world tree back to world tree to return us to our scene. Now we're going to want to set up a hit marker, which allows us to know when a target has been hit. So if we add a child mesh of the target, a type crystal ball, and position that just above the target. Then let's go ahead and rename this to hit marker. Now let's go ahead and add a child light to this mesh just to help us know when we've hit the target. Let's position the light slightly in front of both. Let's rename this to hit marker light. Adjust the color to green. Change the intensity to 5000. The attenuation to 200 and turn off shadows. Once we're happy with the position of the light, we want to tell the script where this hit marker is. Now we can go to the template section of the library, drag down our new target template to the hotbar, and place a bunch of these targets throughout our level. Now we can open up the asset library, go to the store and look for move and rotate, which can be found under the tags obby and crater. So now once we have these scripts, let's set up some moving targets to make the game a bit more interesting. For this, we're going to go back to our meshes and search for target dummy. Place one in the level, and let's rename this to moving target. Let's create a new template of this because we know we're going to want to have multiple copies. So remove this original one, go to the world tree and filter down for our moving target so we can work on it there. First thing we're going to want to do is to set it to damage enabled to allow our weapons to hit it. Then add a couple of scripts, one being the target script and the other being our new move and rotate script. For the move and rotate script, let's set it to bounce. Let's set rotation end to be 0, 0, 0 and movement end will leave that as 0, 0, 0 for now as we can set that up on a per target basis. 
similar to the other targets. Let's add a crystal ball child mesh. And position it just above the target. Let's rename this to moving hit marker. Then let's select a child light and rename this as well. Similar to before, let's set this light to green and adjust the rest of the light settings to be more appropriate. Okay, so once we're happy, let's return to the scene. Let's go to the templates and select our new moving target. And let's place one or two in the level. Once we've placed one, Let's work out by looking at the position in the properties window, roughly how far we want to adjust the position by and set that in the movement end properties. Let's go ahead and repeat this a few times throughout the level. Now that we have our targets set up, let's adjust the weapon to be more appropriate for our level. Instead of a laser pistol, let's look for, to use a crossbow. In the properties window, we can adjust the mesh asset and search at the top for crossbow. We can adjust the sound the weapon makes. So in our gun script, we have a property for the sound. Let's use crossbow fire. And finally, at the bottom, let's adjust in the inventory item spec to call it crossbow in the inventory at the bottom of the screen. Once we're done with that, let's return to our scene. Now it's time to populate our level with some more interesting meshes. If we go to the asset library and in the meshes, we search for the tag magic castle. There's a whole list of various meshes, which will be very good to fill this level out with. Try experimenting with a number of meshes here and try and create interesting scenes throughout the level. Once you're happy with the level, the last thing we need to do is position our start default entity so players will spawn in the right place. All that's left to do now is to press play or F5 to preview the level and enjoy.